So let's start with question one. Question one says coughing forces the track to, to contract, which affects the velocity of the air passing through the track here. The velocity of the air during coughing is given by that, where k is a constant, r is a normal radius, and r is a radius during coughing. What radius will produce a maximum air velocity? So we write our equation v is equal to k r minus r and then r squared. Now I want you to understand that the capital letter r is standing for the normal radius and then the r is the radius that is produced during the coughing, during the contraction. So this is what's happening. So after it contracts it gets longer and smaller. The radius becomes smaller. So we need to determine the radius that will produce a maximum air velocity. Maximum air velocity. So something that has to do with a maximum minimum, you know that we can easily determine it when we want to use by just using the first derivative, right? You know that at the stationary point is where we have the maximum and the minimum. So us just coming up with a first derivative, the first derivative helps us determine the stationary points. At the two at the stationary point you're going to determine one of them is going to be minimum, the other one is going to be maximum. So let's try just just try to analyze and determine the, the the change of our velocity in respect to r by differentiating. Of course, we are differentiating in respect to small r because it's one that changes. The normal one doesn't change. It only it only changes during the coughing. So the one that is produced during coughing changes depending depending on a lot of factors, okay? And that affects the velocity. So let's try to differentiate this. So dv in respect to r is going to be, let's distribute the r squared so that we can make understand it better. So it's going to be k and then we've got r, r squared minus r to the power three after you distribute. Forget about the constant k outside, let's differentiate is inside. So we've got a power 2 there times the r is going to be 2 r, reduce the power by 1, it remains just 1. The other part, there's a 1 there, it's going to be 3. The power reduces by 1 becomes the power 2. Good, right? Now dv dr becomes, you can distribute the, just distribute the k for the sake of coming up with a simple 1 basic equation. So it's 2k r r minus 3k r squared. So we've determined our first derivative. Now our goal at this point is sh we should be able to determine the the derivative, right? Oh, we've already determined the derivative. Now we need to determine the point where the derivative is going to be equal to a zero, the stationary point. So we cut it to zero. We have 2k. So let's just go on and just do things first here so that we can just differentiate right away without wasting any time. So let's factorize what is common. So we know that r is common. So we have r for the first part, you're going to remain with 2k capital R minus 3k R. So we've differentiated. Don't forget about the first derivative. Let's put it aside. It's going to be useful later on in the question. So at that point, are we able to find the values of R? That's a question. So what are the possible values of R? So you know when you factorize, you can come up with two equations. So one is R is equal to zero. The other one is what's in the brackets. 2K R minus 3K R is equal to what? Zero. So at this point, we have 2K R is equal to 3K R. What's our goal here? Our goal is to find the value of a small r. So the k is common, of course. So divide by 3, divide by 3, you end up with 2r over 3 is equal to, that's a small value, r, right? Okay. So we found the two points, the two stationary points. One is r is equal to 0, the other one is r is equal to 2r over 3. Now, how do we know which one is the maximum and which one is the minimum? 
So we have to use what we call a second derivative test. The second derivative test helps us determine that. So we have to differentiate the first derivative. So d squared v over dr squared is going to be equal to. Again, let's try to write an our r. So multiply by that one, it's going to be 2k r. Reduce by one, it becomes the power zero. So we just it will just be r to the power zero minus two times the three is going to be six k r the power reduces by one, it now becomes the power one. So the other one it has disappeared because it was r to the power zero. That's why. Okay. So we have our second derivative. We can do it even pull out the k. So we have two r minus minus six r. So we can try to test which one give us a negative, which one give us a positive. I believe you know that when it's a positive, negative and zero. So in the zero you know it's a point of infection or infraction. When it's a negative you know that it's a maximum. And then when it's a positive you know that it's a, a minimum point. That's the nature of a stationary point. of the natures of stationary points. So if you plug in a zero, plug in a zero is the error there. So that point will become a zero. That all point will be eliminated. So you just basically remain with k two r or two k r. Is that a positive or a negative? It's a positive. So it's a minima. Well, if you try the other value, 2r, so k okay, 2r, you are substituting that we have is this. So that's going to be 6 times 2r over 3. What are you going to end up with? That's a 1, that's 2. So you end up with k, in the brackets of 2r, 2 times that 2r is going to be a 4r, right? So you end up with k multiplied by negative 2r which is basically going to be negative 2kr which is clearly a negative, right? so that becomes a maximum so which radius has given us a maximum? it's this radius so find the radius that will produce a maximum air velocity so the one that's maximizing the change of v in respect to our radius is basically r is equal to 2 dependent on the big radius divided by 3 this is our radius